What's going on guys? Hey, I just wanted to do a short little video uh, talking about Gunnersville bass fishing in the springtime. Um, these short clips here are going to go over catching some fish on a frog. I'm going to catch a few fish on a buzzbait. Um, I think I'll show you guys uh, or show me catching a fish or two on a Texas rig. So basically, I just want to explain to you guys what it is that I, I was doing, what it is that I was looking for and try to give you a little bit better breakdown of how I targeted Gunnersville during the springtime. So uh, first things first, uh, I relied a lot on the frog, not just because the frog was the best thing to throw, but mainly because the frog is so much fun to catch fish on. I just, I love a frog bite. I love catching them on top water. Um, and I was targeting them with the Savage Gear. That is the DC frog, and this is in a bluegill color. You can see here, this one is absolutely chewed up. I actually had to tie the nose of it with some braided line because it ripped a little bit from catching so many fish and that would prevent it from pulling over the, the hook. But this frog probably caught 25 fish. Um, the great part about these frogs is the legs are so strong. I mean, as you can tell, the legs are in great shape, which is, which is awesome. I mean, the legs are an important part of a frog. Um, I really like the way they come out of the body too. It's real flush, so you don't have any of that pulling going on where it sucks the back of the frog together. Um, really nice profile, real wide body, so it displaces a lot of water. It's really good around matted vegetation, but this bluegill color is also really good in open water uh, situations. So the, the bluegill color frog was a key player. I was making long casts with this around spawning areas. I was targeting uh, grass, but I was also targeting pad stems. I was targeting shallow areas, but the key was to have some sort of a shell or some sort of a hard bottom around these areas. It didn't necessarily have to be exactly where you were casting, but you had to have that stuff near kind of integrated to where you were fishing. That's where these fish like to sit down and spawn. And those, those, those key hard bottom areas is where these fish will be in the springtime. And the frog is just a great way to cover water. And for whatever reason, it seems like it gets larger strikes. I don't know if it's just because the females, it, it pisses them off. I'm not really sure what it is, but the frog seems to get larger strikes. Um, you know, I caught some good ones the, a few days prior that weren't on video. And these, these clips are going to be an integration of a few days of fishing. Um, they're not all from the same day. So if you see me wearing different shirts and different gloves and different buffs and all that stuff, that's because it's from a couple different days of fishing. Um, you might even see my buddy Rich Fry on there. Um, shout out to Rich. He just won his first BFL as a co-angler over on Wheeler Lake. What an awesome, what an awesome uh, finish for Rich. He's, he's uh, been working really hard at that. Been trying to win one of those for a long time. So shout out to Rich. You might see him in one of the clips. He's wearing his work clothes. I called him up and I was like, you want to get on a good frog bite? He's like, yeah. And so he came from work and jumped on the boat. That's why he's wearing what he's wearing. But, um, you know, shout out to Rich. Good job on that tournament. But you're going to see us catching fish on this guy, that Savage or DC frog. Um, Rich was throwing a, a standard, I don't remember, Spro or something. He wasn't getting bit and he's like, I'm not stupid. Do you have another one of those frogs? Because I was getting bit. And uh, I was like, yeah, here, let me see if I got another one. So I grabbed one out of my box and I tossed it to him and he tied it on. And I swear within 10 minutes, he missed one on it. And then uh, a few casts later, he stuck like a four pounder on that frog. So um, super cool. Um, you guys might see that in here. And uh, the other bait we were doing, or the other way we were targeting them. So the frog, like I said, I'm going to get back into the details of it. The frog was more for targeting covering water, targeting areas with the grass, kind of fishing around the edges. You could also get them to blow up through the matted vegetation. But when you get up closer, a really, really good way to fish it, I didn't do it in this video at all, but a really, really good way to fish it is with a wacky worm. Um, spinning rod with like 10 or 15 pound braided line to about a, I wouldn't go any lighter than 10 pound liter in the grass around Gunnersville. I would say 10 to 15 pound fluorocarbon liter. Um, you don't need a super long liter, maybe seven or eight feet. 10 feet maybe, um, and just pitch that into all the little holes you see. That's in the springtime. Um, especially look for light spots and pitch up there. Essentially, you're just bed fishing, but from a distance, those fish are gonna bite much quicker when you're not right on top of them. Wacky worm works really good. I caught them really good on the Savage Gear Armor Tube Worm on the Wacky Rig. The Gambler Ace is a killer bait. You can get, There's so many good colors of the Ace. Um, it, it falls a little bit slower. It's not heavily salted, so it stays up in the strike zone really, really well. And that's a really good way to catch them. Another really good way to catch them is the Gambler Burner Craw. And I'll either peg a 3 16th or a quarter ounce weight above it. Um, on Gunnersville, I like to peg it because we've got a lot of eelgrass. We've got a lot of coontail. We've got a lot of vegetation up shallow that that bait needs to kind of slide in and out of. 
Um, if you're fishing a lake where you're not really dealing with a lot of grass, this time of the year it's great to not peg your weight. Keep your weight sliding freely on your line. It's going to, in turn, you're going to result in getting more hookups because that, that bait's going to get sucked in better from the fish. The weight's not connected. Um, if you can get away with it, it, it frees up the action of the bait. It doesn't drag it down into all the scum and stuff on the bottom. Um, try not pegging it. But on Gunnersville, I like to peg it. And the same deal there with the as the Wacky Rig. Pitching it into holes, kind of side casting it to little holes, and just basically target casting, but in a grass flat. So if you can envision fishing a big flat, but then isolating little stuff in the flat, looking for holes. Um, and if it's calm, you can even see the fish and, and sight fish. And the burner craw is a great bait to bed fish with. You know, I like the ghost gill color to start, and I like to chartreuse the tips. And then if I'm using, uh, if I'm trying to see the bait more in relation to the fish, white lightning is the way to go. So check that out. Uh, I think there's a few fish, fish catches on the burner craw in this video. And then the buzz bait, just, uh, I believe I, I started using recently the accent, the Jacob Wheeler accent buzz bait. And I really like that buzz bait. The, the wire has like a nice kind of rough finish to it. And so when that blade spins on there, it creates this little squeal. And I know Matt uh, Stefan talks about it in some of his YouTube videos. If you haven't checked out his channel, he's got some really great content. He's been pumping it out lately, and he's been letting out a lot of really good uh, nuggets of information. But Stefan, in one of his videos, talks about the buzz bait and how he likes it to squeal. Well, a lot of buzz baits out of the package don't do that. A lot of them you have to tweak, you have to bend the, the uh, clevis, you have to rough up the wire. You have to do stuff to get it to do that. That accent buzz bait right out of the pack does that. And I really like that. I like being able to grab a bait, tie it on, keep fishing it. I don't like, I mean, I like tweaking with my gear, but I also, time, time, you know, management is important. So being able to just grab it out of the pack, tie it on, keep, you know, casting is, is nice. So that's a great buzz bait. I'm um, trying to think what else we caught them on. Oh, I caught one on a swim jig that I'll show you guys too. That was on a three eighth ounce dirty jig swim jig. And I had a Gambler Easy Swimmer on the back in White Lightning. This time of the year, these shad are starting to spawn. Um, all the bait fish are up shallow. So the, the swim jig is a great option on Gunnersville. It's good around that 6 to 10 foot grass. Um, even a little shallower, like maybe 4 to 10 foot grass. And you can fish it shallower than that. Don't get me wrong. I just I think it excels in that little bit deeper stuff. You can swim, swim it through that eelgrass really good. And if you feel it load up with eelgrass, I don't even necessarily pull my rod. I'll just kind of pop the reel handle every once in a while, kind of clear it and it just keep swimming it. That Easy Swimmer is a great trailer. It creates a nice drag behind the bait and it keeps that bait running nice and nice and uh, true. And the swim jig is a great option. So Gunnersville in the springtime, focus on grass, focus on eelgrass, target humps, target points. And look for hard bottom, look for shell, look for um, like hard, just hard bottom in general. And another, a good way to test this is if you get up shallow and you poke your rod in the water and you hear it kind of going, you know, you're around shell because it's, it's that, that shell's really hard and you'll, you'll hear it on the tip of your rod. Um, you know, and if you get up, if, a lot of the times when you get into the back of a pocket, it might look really good for spawning fish. But the problem is, is a lot of that bottom is really, really mucky and mushy. And the bass don't like to spawn on that stuff. It doesn't really hold their eggs very well. There's not a lot of stuff down there on the bottom in order to clear off and then have the eggs kind of attached to. So they really like to spawn on that shell. The shell is a great place for the fish to spawn. So you'd be amazed how many fish on Gunnersville will actually spawn on humps or spawn on main lake stuff. Uh, main lake points, main lake humps, like I said, main lake islands, uh, just, just right off the main lake. You know, you don't necessarily have to go way, way back in a pocket to catch spawning fish um, on Gunnersville. So hopefully that helps you out, guys. I'm letting out some, some information here, letting out uh, some nuggets on Gunnersville. I've been learning this lake over the last few years, and I, I don't feel like I'm an expert by any means, but I feel like I do understand a little bit about the lake. In the springtime, I, I really enjoy fishing and I love to catch the fish around the spawn. Obviously, I don't like to harass the fish. I like to catch them, take a few pictures, get a video of them, and then toss them back in the water. I don't like to live well the fish. I don't like to put multiple fish in the live well, especially unless I'm fishing a tournament, um, and then I'm sort of forced to. But 
I do definitely don't like to do that when I'm fun fishing. I don't like to, to live well three, four, five fish throughout the day and then get a photo. I just feel like these fish are up there doing their thing and we don't really need to be carrying them around in the boat. They're already stressed out enough because they're spawning and it's just unnecessary. So, you know, if you catch, if you go out bed fishing or if you go out fishing during the spawn when the fish are up on the beds, you know, catch that fish. If it's a nice one, take a photo, take a video, whatever you want to do, make sure you're keeping it in and out of the water and then release that fish back directly where you caught it. Don't, don't let the boat drift way off. Don't let the boat, you know, don't troll way down the bank. Uh, just, just stay where you're at, where you caught the fish and put it back near that area. Cause we need to, um, we need this resource. We need to continue the resource and the bass when they, you know, especially the big ones, when they spawn, those are the genes that we want in the lake. So take that information to heart and hopefully you guys enjoy this video and learn something and have a stellar day. And if you're not already, subscribe to this channel, like this video, tell your buddies, tell your mom, your dad, whoever, and help my channel kind of grow here, guys. I'm, I'm enjoying doing the videos. I know it, there's been kind of a lull, but I'm going to try to put some more videos out here for you guys um, lately. And we're going to continue to do the tournament videos. I've got Eufaula coming up next. And then I believe Chickamauga for the Toyota series. I'll try to run a camera on that one. The problem with the last two Toyota series is the weather was horrible. And on Dale Hollow, I actually was running down the lake. I had a GoPro in. I was planning on doing a video. And we get to the first spot and my, my uh, co-angler goes, hey, did you take the camera out of the back? And I was like, camera? No, no, it should be back there. And I look back there and it's gone. It's just straight up gone. Yeah, I don't know. I had one of the, I had the first generation YOLO tech sticks and i don't know if the screw thing just wasn't good or what or, but the whole thing gopro and all right out the back so yeah that's why you don't see any footage from dale hollow but you hopefully see some from chickamauga like i said you follow for the pro circuit and then potomac for the pro circuit and then the last one's going to be the saint lawrence for the pro circuit and then right now we're sitting really good for points for both the toyotas and the pro circuit so hopefully you'll see videos from those uh, championship and title events. And we hopefully we qualify for that stuff. So anyway, guys, have a good one. Enjoy the video and keep fishing and, 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 you know, enjoy this springtime weather. So take it easy guys. There he is. Got him. Big it. Feels like a giant. Oh dude, that looks like a giant. Get get over in front of the GoPro. Oh my god. Oh my god. Get in front of this GoPro. <laughs> Give you something to show somebody. Get that fish in here, Rich. That looks like a big one. Oh, look at that tail. Keep him pinned. Keep him pinned. Come on, fish. Just way out there, huh? Boy, just like as soon as it hit the water almost. Come on, baby. Get him here. Get him here. Get him here. There he is. I can't tell. He's in a mat. Feels like a giant, Oh, that's a but, big one. What a good one. That's a big one. Look at that frog. Look at that frog down there. Another <laughs> three and three quarter probably. That's your fish. Give me that fish. There you go, dude. Give me that fish. You want Give me pick? that. Fillet your fish. Yeah. Look at that frog, man. Only the little nose is hanging out.